everyone, it's Jesse G here. Welcome back to Jesse's Hangout. Welcome, welcome. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, welcome to today's episode. This is episode number 13. You saw the first half of the first part of the Queen Anne Berlin and of the history uh, mini series that I'm doing on historical people. You've seen the first two parts of those already. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was really interesting for me to do. It's something um, I've been wanting to do for quite some time, actually. Um, I've had those notes laying around for quite a while. Um, I don't know what made me want to write those notes, but I think she was just a very interesting person. I think it was for, like, my Tumblr blog or something, but she was just a very interesting person. woman and I decided to one day type up the notes and everything um so when I did um I found them laying around and that's when I decided to do this uh historical uh series um this is um all going to be all about John Wilmot second Earl of Rochester um this will be um the third half of it, these two uh, parts will be the third half of it, and then Henry VIII uh, will be the fourth half of it, and then um, Elizabeth will be the last half of it. So um, I hope you guys will enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed the first and second parts of this, um, the two first parts of Anne Berlin. I hope you guys enjoyed that. So... Uh, Without further ado, let's get into today's episode, but before I start today's episode, you guys saw a copyright uh, disclaimer, you saw an age warning, and you saw a trigger warning. Um, I'm going to give an age warning. Um, This is not an episode for 18 and under. Um, I'm sorry for that, but that's just not uh, what this episode is going to be for for you guys. Um, also, I'm going to leave a bit of a trigger warning, too, because um, even though this might not be a, a real sensitive subject, but there's some sensitive uh, things that are, uh, are about the uh, John Wilmot, so it might be a little bit too sensitive for you guys. So if you're triggered or sensitive by any of the topics talked about in today's episode, this is not an episode for you guys to listen to, but if you do choose to listen to today's episode at your own discretion, I highly recommend that you listen to it with somebody, your emotional support system, um, that way if any of this triggers you angrily or uh, PTSD or something like that of the sort, um, they're there for you. So take all those warnings in that age warning and Um, The disclaimers you saw before this uh, started, so without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so I'm going to kind of do a little bit of something-something before I read about him. Um, What really drew me to doing this one, I've never done anything uh, on John Wilmot. Um, I saw a movie that was made that starred Johnny Depp and... uh, John Malkovich, um, he, he's a really good actor, he's been in all sorts of movies, I mean, he's just really awesome, and to have the both of these two awesome actors in the same movie was really cool, um, if you don't know John Malkovich, he was in, um, the movie called Red with Bruce Willis, Helen Mirren, and, um, some other good actors that were in there as well. Uh, they were in the, they were in that movie. He was in that movie with them, so it was really cool. Um, I'll probably get into a little bit more as to why I decided to do this, um, and probably the second half. This will be two parts, so let's get straight into it. John Wilmot, second Earl of Rochester, was born the first of April, sixteen forty-seven. He was born an English. Uh, poet and corner of the king Char- of king charles the second of england rochester attended a grammar school in uh, a nearby uh, butford um or near barry butford or something like that if i'm saying it right his father soon died in 1558 he was the uh 
first Earl of Rochester, and then his son was the second, and then I think uh, John Wilmot's son was, one of his sons was the third Earl. Um, John inherited the title of Earl of Rochester um, after, soon after his father had died. In April of that year, in January uh, 1660, Rochester was uh, admitted fellow command, uh, commoner to the uh, Wilhelm College, uh, uh, Oxford, a new and completely competitively poor <laughs> college. Um, in September 1661, he was awarded an honorary M.A. by the newly elected uh, Chancellor of the University, Edward uh, Hyder, or Hyde, Earl of uh, Cleverton, um, a family friend. Um, King Charles took to John. Um, he had a... Uh, he, King Charles took to John. He had a gratitude towards him because of his father, the late Earl. So he kind of took to his son. Um, uh, he kind of uh, took him under his wing at first, so to speak. And John was real, uh, mind you, when John Wilmot took the Earl of Rochester title, he was very, very young when he took it. He was like still a, a, a probably possibly a teen or a boy when he took it, so he was really really young when he took it. His father was uh, he would die uh, when he was really young. His father died when he was young, so he took on a lot. He took on a title that for somebody who's still a boy and still trying to figure out the world and and the time like that in the 1600s when. King Charles was king, um, it was rough because King Charles II's reign and him ascending to the throne wasn't easy because he had to fight somebody to get there. He lost, uh, Tr King Charles lost his own father. He was, uh, he was executed. Um, so there was a lot of things that Charles went through and he really took to John. Um, I think, I wasn't really sure if it was necessarily because of his late father or if it was just something about John that impressed him. Um, it, it, it's kind of interesting to see how their friendship was because, you know, it was kind of like uh, a father-son type of relationship if you really want to go really deep, if that makes any sense. Um, um, because of the late Earl of Walmart, son uh, Charles II conferred, conferred on Rochester an annual position uh, or pension of 500, uh, I think of 500 pounds or something like that. Um, in November 1660, Charles sent, uh, sent a, uh, sent, uh, basically sent Rochester on a three-year grand tour um, of France and Italy and appointed the physician Andrew uh, Belford uh, as his governor. His, uh, this exposed him to an unusual degree of European writing and thought. Um, in 1664, Rochester returned to London and made his uh, formal debut at the Resurrection Court on Christmas Day. Um, before I get too far into this, like I said, this is going to be possibly maybe two parts, possibly three. Um, if you guys don't know John Wilmot, he wasn't just an Earl. He was a poet. He was a writer. He was a poet. He was really good at what he did. But some some of his works and some of his poems, as you will find out as I read along with this, some of it got him into trouble. Um, John Wilmot, from what I could read about him, he was a bit of a rebel, so to speak. You know, he just kind of had his own frame of mind. And I think it got him into a lot of trouble. And I think it 
bit him in the butt at the end of his life, too. I think his past um, scruples and his drinking habits and his uh, not-so-good habits caught up with him in the end. And I'll get a little bit more opinionated in either the second or third part. Um, Charles suggested um, a marriage between Elizabeth Mallet and... Uh, her wealth-hungry family opposed the marriage to the uh, improved Rochester. <laughs> In other words, they didn't like it at first. Let's just put it that way. Um, uh, concerned with it, uh, so he conspired with his mother to abduct the young countess, um, Samuel Pipes, uh, this, uh, Samuel, uh, uh, Pipes, is P-E-P-Y-S, I think that's how you say it. Um, he described, um, the attempt of abduction in his diary on the, on the sec, uh, the 20th of May, 1565. It described how the abduction happened and how, uh, King Charles was angry and John was in the tower uh, was thrown in the tower for, uh, he was 18 years old. John spent three weeks in the tower and was released only after he wrote an, uh, pendant apology to the king. Um, basically, um, I'm gonna kind of go into a bit of detail with that. Basically, he was, he was so infatuated and so, um, beguiled in Elizabeth, um, the romance was so talked about a lot because of how the family really didn't kind of oppose to him really didn't I'm assuming that's another word for not liking him um it was it was a bit of a kerfuffle with that so um it was really big thing that went around um John kind of made a I wouldn't necessarily say made a name for himself, but I think he kind of shined a different type of spotlight on himself. I don't know if it was a really good one or not, because he was 18 years old when he married Elizabeth. He was really young. Or he was 18 years old when he was um, having his little, excuse me, sorry about that, by the way. Um, he was having his little... Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say fleeing, but just trying to court Elizabeth, you know, because back then, it was always men that courted the women. It was never the other way around like it is today. Today, it's different. Um, back then, not so much. Um, so, it just kind of basically described how it happened and, you know, um, how the king was really mad and how he was released after he wrote that an apology to him. Um, Rochester, an attempt to redeem himself um, by volunteering for the King's Navy in the Second Dutch War in the winter of 1665, serving under the Earl of Sandwich. <laughs> um, his uh, uh, courage at the Battle of uh, Vagan, serving on board the ship of Thomas Ted Tedman, uh, made him a war hero. Uh, the king was pleased as the years went on. John continued to show favor for Charles II. Upon returning from the sea, Rochester resumed his courtship of Elizabeth Mount and eloped with Rochester in January 1667. They were married in Kingbridge Chapel. Um, they had four children. Um, Lady Anne Wilmot, uh, she was born in 1669 and died in 1703. Charles Wilmot, who was born in 1671 and died in 1681, uh, sorry. Um, Elizabeth Wilmot, uh, born se uh, 1674 and died in seven, uh, 1757, and um, Lady uh, Melt Wilmot, 
she was born 1676 uh, and died in 1708 or 09, whichever one. In October uh, 1667, the uh, Marsh granted Rochester the special license to enter the House of Lords. Soon after, Rochester became in, involved with a young teenage Nell Gwynn. Uh, they became lovers. She was uh, his mistress. Uh, uh, she became a mistress of Charles II. Um, uh, she became uh, her, uh, because of this uh, because of her being the mistress of King Charles it kind of gave um, kind of put John Wilmot's foot in the door so to speak. Um, it basically Rochester uh, influence starts with the court uh, later into his 20s. Uh, so um, basically his status within the court and later into his 20s. Rochester offended the king and was sent away from court. But, was, uh, but it wasn't long before the king summoned him back. Um, basically what happened... Um, he offended the king by uh, making a poem about his wife. I think it was about his wife or something of the sorts. I'm really not sure exactly what happened, but I think it was a, uh, from the movie with Johnny Depp and um, John Malkovich. It kind of explained it a little bit. He kind of uh, pulled out the wrong paper by accident and delivered the wrong poem um, in in John's def defense uh, when he was talking to his friends. I'm not 100% sure on this, so don't quote me on it. Um, he basically offended the king with the wrong poem, and it got him into trouble, and it got him banished from court. And then... Um, he was, uh, sometime after his, I think it was like three years, um, and, uh, out of court, he was sent back because the king was going through some stuff with parliament. Um, he was kind of, uh, getting into this little friction and he needed John to help him. He needed to confine in John and figure out a way to, um, uh, praised the king and everything. And plus John was already within the court and you know he kind of valued his opinion and all that type of stuff. So um let's see here. Um the king uh, uh, in 1673 Rochester began to train Elizabeth Berry an actress um, she went on to become the most famous actress of her age. John took her as a mistress in 1675, and the relationship lasted five years. Um, they had a daughter um, that resulted from uh, them two being together. Um, uh, I don't know if... Rochester really had anything to do with his daughter's life or not, but I know he did with his other kids, but I can't really say a positive in depth if he had anything to do with his daughter because um, Elizabeth Berry might have had different terms or whatever. Um, Rochester began to resent her success. The king, the king's uh, King Charles advisor and friend of uh, Rochester, George uh, Valors, lost power in 1673. Um, Rochester's standing also fell as well. Basically, he just kind of went into a spiral downfall. Basically. It just basically kind of kicked the ground out from underneath them in a sort of a way. Um, uh, so it just kind of went on for a while. He, he, really, he really got himself into trouble with the king. Um, it was... Rochester really did pin himself into the corner. Um, and then by the age of 33, Rochester was, uh, 
uh, dying from what was described as the effects of uh, typhus syphilis or um, many other diseases that were going on around the 1600s and possibly uh, they also possibly thought it was the result of his um, alcoholism because John liked to drink a lot he was around women a lot so there was a lot of STDs that were contracted back then and he got a lot of them um, uh, John kind of really uh, really didn't take care of himself he just kind of when the downward spiral happened he just kind of let himself go he basically just kind of lost himself in the drink and women and just kind of just lost himself and into a downward spiral. Um, in the early morning hours of uh, July the 26th, 1680, John Wilmot, 2nd Earl of Rochester, died without a shudder or a sound. He was buried in the uh, Spillsbury Church if I'm saying it right, Salisbury Church, I'm thinking, in Oxfordshire. After John Wilmot's passing, a friend, uh, Revered, uh, uh, Burnett, um, published a deathbed re resurrection of the, uh, liberalism and, um, conviction to uh, allegations, Christianity, and some passage of life and death of a noble uh, John Wilmot. So those are just some of the things he published. I didn't really say that very well, but yeah. Um, he, a friend of his published a lot of stuff um, about John Wilmot. Um, he kind of did a play for one of them. It was the uh, life and death of the noble John Wilmot. Um, there was a movie that was made about him that starred Johnny Depp as John Wilmot, 2nd Earl of Rochester. It was called The uh, Lebetines. Um, it also starred John Malkovich. Uh, he was King Charles II. Um, it was a really good movie. Um, it was very strange. It was very... Uh, it, it was, it's definitely a rated R movie, I will say that much, um, but it really did dive into, um, Rochester's life, uh, what his married life was to Elizabeth, um, what his relationship was like with his mother, what was basically how it was for him to be a poet, his relationship with, uh, King Charles, what, uh, what orchestrated his spiral downfall and in in this eventually led to his death at the age of 33 um it was just really a sad story it was a really a sad um movie but it also just kind of shed a lot of light on the tragic life and death of this earl of rochester um it, it definitely put a lot of perspective around that time. Um, I'll get a little bit more in-depth uh, with this one, with the second part. Um, we'll talk a little bit about it and um, just kind of voice my uh, opinions and just kind of, uh, just kind of open talk about it after this. Um, so stay tuned for the second part. I hope you guys enjoyed the first part. If you haven't hit that red subscribe button yet, uh, hit that red subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload the second part and the rest of my historical series. Um, I have a true crime series in the works still. You guys will be hearing from me on that one soon. Um, if you wish to be even more notified and stay up to even more date with everything, follow me on all of my social medias. They're listed in the description box below this episode. Um, if you wish to see episodes 1 through 8 of Jesse's Hangout, go check out my old second channel, Jesse's Reviews and Podcasts. Um, go check that out. Uh, check out the latest episodes that I've done. The, um, uh, Resident Evil gameplay review and the Keepers update episode and 
part one and two of Queen Anne Berlin. Um, I hope you guys will enjoy those. I hope you guys have an awesome morning, afternoon, day, night, wherever you're watching this from. And I will catch you all in the next part. Laters.